guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today, we have another episode of Bible study. We'll be diving into John chapter verses 12 through 22. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by me, and we're going to do an ending prayer by Brother Gio. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you have made. I will rejoice and begin in God. I thank you for my brothers, God, to be able to come together on this Saturday, God, to be able to discuss your word, God, to be able to educate ourselves more in your word, God. I pray that your word will be able to speak to us, God. I pray that we'll be able to comprehend your word and apply it to our life, God. I pray that you continue to be with us each and every day, God. I pray that no weapon from against you shall prosper, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Verses 12 says, The next day, the news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, sweep through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down to the road to meet him and shouted, Praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail the King of Israel. What did you get from verses 12 and 13? This is the, uh, the fulfillment of one of the prophets, um, what, they, what God told one of the prophets to say in the Old Testament, um, which just all falls in line with every, like the purpose of why uh, Jesus came to the earth to begin with, which was to fulfill everything that was mentioned in the Old Testament. Um, I can't, I was looking for it the other day to figure out um, exactly where is this located in the Bible. Um, about him being worshipped with palm branches and them crying out Hosanna. Um, but I, I didn't get a chance to uh, find it. I got caught up with something else. But this is pretty much uh, why we have like Palm Sunday. Um, this is like a similar thing. It's in um, It's, it's, it's fall, it falls in line with this section of uh, scripture. Um, it might be um, Matthew 21, Gio. Uh, but it, I think it's important to, to realize why these people were, were praising him um, when he entered or started, was riding the donkey, right? Uh, not because they recognized him to be who he was, Jesus. But they thought again that this is their king that they've been waiting for, right? That he would be this national leader that would, would restore them to their former glory in the country. Right? So that's why they were praising him, not because they understood him to be, knew him to be Jesus, but because they, again, they were looking for a king. For a long time, they said, All right, finally, we have this man here. He must be our king. Once I heard about the um, praising to him with the um, I just automatically thought about Palm Sunday, so I was connected to Palm Sunday. Mm. Right. Hey, it's interesting that he came in on the Old Testament. I mean, the King James Version says an ass, but all the other translations calls it a donkey. But either way, it's the same animal. Same just, thing. It's, um, the point I'm trying to make is that it wasn't like this, this stallion, like this big grand shiny horse decked out in gold and, and ornaments and everything yeah it was just like a lowly donkey just to the side and that's mm -hmm. that's where he came in and and i think that was indicative of his humility that he came to save us that he came to reach the the poor the blind the deaf the mute the dumb um the harlot the the, the tax collector the stealer those those type of people you know, he didn't come to say that I'm greater than you, um, you know, move from me. He came to say, come, let me touch you. Let me feel your infirmity. Let me, let me go through and experience what you experience so that you can be resurrected and lifted up with me, that you can be saved with me and sit with me in heavenly places. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, that in itself probably shocked the people because I'm sure they believe or thought that he would come on a war for. Right now that he came riding on the donkey, well, is, is, like, is this your king? Like some um, Wakanda joint, right? Mm -hmm. This your king? Yeah. 
But like Gio said, it, it, it showed uh, this humility that what he really came for. He didn't come uh, to show his kingship of that of a warrior, but to give his life. I think I found the, um, where it was alluded to in the Old Testament, uh, Isaiah 40. Um, I mean, for me, it just literally just hit, or a reminder anyway, like how Jesus came to fulfill everything that was in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So it was like, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, and then I'm going to show you what's going to happen, and then I'm going to make it happen. Is what he did between the old and the new. And then now in the New Testament, he's telling you that I'm going to come, and then I'm going to tell you what's going to happen when I'm going to come. And I'm going to show you what's going to happen when I come. So it was like, if you don't believe that he's coming back, like the book itself, like shows you that he's coming back. Like yeah. it, it's, this proof is in the pudding right here. It would be almost like the Pharisees, right? Asking him, or oh, perform a miracle. Like, fam, I've, I've done so much already. How much more do you need me to do for you in order for you to believe? You were going to read it? Oh, yeah, it, it was just like a, a comparison, but um, yeah, I'll pull it up right now. I was just even thinking about the king part, like um, how in the big, I think it was. Man, I can't remember what chapter it was when, or what book it was in, when God was like, I'm going to be your king. And they were crying out for a king so bad. It might have been the first Samuel. They were crying out for a king so bad, and he had made Saul the king. You know, they were looking for somebody tall and strapping, and, and like the outward appearance mattered to them. And so God just allowed this whole period, this time frame of them having kings. And then he went from king, like he had, he had judges, like he just always had like a, a main person leading them. And it's just like in the back of my mind, like he knew that all this was gonna happen. He knew he was gonna have his King Saul, his King David, his King Solomon, um, that would ultimately give him glory. And then lastly, to have King Jesus, who didn't have a huge um, mansion built, ap built after him or built because of him or built before him. He didn't have, um, you know, a whole bunch of land and, and riches and things like that. He didn't even have a home to sleep in. He just slept wherever he went. Like if somebody opened up their doors to him or they, you know, I guess they stayed outside. And it is just like, he did all of this to show what it was supposed to be like. Isaiah 40, <clears throat> um, Verse six says, the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth because the spirit of the Lord between upon, bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Here's verse nine where it says, O Zion, that bring us good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bring us good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. So pretty much it's just like encouraging them that your king has arrived. He will rule with a with a strong hand, so don't be afraid. Um, things may not seem like they're going in the direction they want to go, but you know, fear no more. Your king is here. Uh, verse fourteen says, "Jesus found a young donkey and roped on it, um, fulfilling the prophecy that says, don't be afraid of the people of Jerusalem. Look at your king; it's coming right in on the donkey's coat." His disciple did not understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. 
But after Jesus entered into his glory, they reminded what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Going to this um this donkey thing and the palms and everything, but I can't seem to pinpoint it at the moment. Maybe I'll see if I can find it later. But yeah, like I said, pretty much Jesus was fulfilling the uh all that the prophets would say. And it's funny too because these this generation is talking now, they weren't around when the prophets were were out there saying and delivering these messages from God, right? So this these things were passed down from generation to generation. Seventeen said many people in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, rising him from the dead. They were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about his miraculous signs. Then pharaohs, then the pharaohs said to each other, "There's nothing we can do. Now there's nothing we can do. Look, everybody has gone after him." Yeah. Yeah, these same people that were were now uh, flocking to meet him and praising him. Uh, would be the same people in the next couple of days that would yell or uh, shout, crucify him. Okay. So they, they were hyped about this, this miracle because he raised Lazarus from the dead. These very same people would be the same ones to say crucify him. So I think this goes back to what, what Jay was saying about the signs and miracles, right? Like a lot of people won't, and I actually even caught myself praying this one time. I was like, God, if you could just part waters and ca cause the sky to divide or do something miraculous so that the youth or even their, their parents or that the people in the world could believe on you. But I realized as I'm reading the scripture, just like that's still not enough because these people came out to just see, because they heard about the Lazarus thing, they, they came out to, to see Jesus and see Lazarus and, and, uh, and hear about this miraculous sign. I think, um, don't quote me, but I just feel like this group of people that 17 through 19 uh, that this talk is referring to is different from the people that um, are, are, are talking about in verses 12 through 13, the people who took the palm branches and praised God as he rode in on the donkey, calling him the King of Israel. I think that 17 through 19 might be a different set of people, but that's just me. I, I'm not like really looking into it right now, but just based off of the scriptures, if you break out the, the, the verses themselves, um, but that's just my take on it. They only came to see the, like just to see about it, like, okay, just come see about it. But I don't think they came with their hearts. I think they just came with just to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing with, with America is, it, is it, it takes a miracle for you to believe and it takes a miracle to sustain you or keep you believing, right? Every day you're going to look for a miracle to happen in order to keep you, keep your faith. But I, I, th I think, Gio, they may be two different sets of people, but still in that, under the same umbrella. Like the first group uh, thought he would be king. He was their best. The, the savior for their country, not, not of their lives, right? And then these second group of people uh, were praising him, but then they would later cru yell crucify him, right? So they may be different in, in how they believe, but I, I feel like they fall under the same um, um, I compare this to like when a person get big and all the people that was hating on them and was not supporting them, now come around and be like, yeah, my man right there, that's you. You know, I had your back from the job. I, I come, I compare this to that. Like it takes success or like miracle for people to believe. And when that don't come, all that belief that they had is gone. And it, it takes that to sustain their belief, right? Right. This is if you put out a trap, Right. Number one, top charts, platinum, right? And you rock with it for a month. And the next month, you put out some traffic. 
All, that, all those people that were rocking with you a month prior because you had that flattened dick, they gone. Right? So I, I love how you, you use that analogy. as well. Very true. Right? Because it, it's going to take you putting on another hot dope track for them to keep following you, keep believing in your music. Verses 20. Some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration paid to visit Philip, who was from Bet, 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 Seattle? Beside um, Beside Beside in Galilee, they said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip told Andrew about it, and they went together to ask Jesus. Everybody wants to see what, what, who this Jesus guy is about, what these miracles about. I want to see Lazarus. I want to see the man that they said was dead and he raised from the dead, right? And I think that I know that everything that Jesus did while he walked the earth was intentional, right? He knew that this would, doing this particular thing, and it's crazy, correct me if I'm wrong, Jay, I, I think he, there's only like maybe three or four people in the room with him when he raised Lazarus from the dead, right? He told like most of the disciples to go out. I think it might be yeah. just Peter and, uh, Peter and some that inner in a circle, James and John. Yeah. Probably his sisters. Yeah, Martha, Mary. I, I don't think it was that many people in a room. So for it to get out like that and spread, mm -hmm. right? Like, because he, he was dead for like maybe two or Four three, days. Four days. Okay. Yeah, he was dead for a little bit. And I guess everybody knew. But to see him walking again, you know, it's just like that was like a staple. Like yeah. people, I was like, "What this dude was right. dead? Like, right. how is he alive again? I want to see it for myself. I don't believe it." And I think that's the opposite of faith. I think faith is being able to believe without seeing. It's the seeing. that you know yeah. what you know because of what you know, right? Yeah. Um, I, I like to call faith my sixth sense, right? Mm. Like, I can't taste, see, touch, feel, hear. I, I can't. But I, I just know without a doubt mm -hmm. that this is what it is. This is what my hope is. And this is what my, like, this is where I'm anchoring my hope. Yeah. I, I got to finish that message, by the way. It was, it was crazy. This guy. I'm telling you, Uncle Jake's is different. Crazy. Yeah, I was listening to some of it. He was hitting. Yeah, I was about to send you a voice note because he did that. He knew he was coming to swinging. Go ahead. And he oh. started hooting and hollering himself. That's what he did. Know. <laughs> yeah, I was fucked up. Um, oh, you spoke about, or you asked about the significance of, of this yeah. verse. Um, because there, there's not much there, but. <clears throat> I think this, this also spoke to the fact that Jesus not only came uh, for the Jews, but the Gentiles as well. Like, just for everyone. Uh, because Philip, uh, Philip, they, as my Bible says, they may have gone to Philip because though he was a Jew, uh, he had a Greek name. Right? So the people that, that came were, were Greek. Right? So they went to Philip because Philip, they're like, oh, he has a Greek name, so he must be Greek. He's actually Jewish, but um, this, Bible, this verse just speaks to the fact that Jesus came for all people, no matter what um, background, nationality, whatever race, no matter the color of your skin. Um, Jesus came for you too. Father God, we thank you for being in the midst of us. Trust and believe that you were here because your word said you would be here. You said when two or three are gathered in your name, you would be in the midst of them. So Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for your revelation, Holy Spirit. Thank you for illuminating the scriptures and allowing us to see and receive all that we have taken part in, oh Lord, in this session. I pray that it would not depart from us, but that it would be sown into our hearts, Father God, the hearts of our spirit, Father God, that it will be transformed and changed, never being the same from before we started this session. Father, our hopes and desires is that you would get the glory, O oh Lord, in all 
the earth, by all creation. So I pray that this little thing that we're doing here on this live Zoom, Father God, would reach the ends of the earth. I pray that we would join in with our brothers and sisters who are sharing the gospel, rightly dividing the word, O oh Lord. I pray that you would continue to give us the knowledge and the wisdom as we read the word, Father, so that those who would listen to these videos and watch these videos would be changed, transformed. That this video would even save some souls, oh Lord. That wow, somebody Jesus. would watch the video and cause them to say, yes, I believe in you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior for you died and you were resurrected just for me. I thank you for my brothers, oh Lord. May they continue. May we continue to help each other and build each other up in the faith as we take this Lord, with you, Lord. Father God. May you never let go of us. May we never let go of you, Father God. Continue to go before us throughout the day. May we follow you. May we have discernment. May we know where your spirit is leading and guiding us. And I pray for the spirit of obedience to rest upon us so that where you lead us, we will follow. Lord. Father, let us not be caught up with the signs and miracles and wonders, but let us just be anchored in our faith, hope, and trust in you. Thank you, Father. Have your divine way in us today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you guys so much for coming back with us to another episode of Bible Study. If you haven't already liked the video, if you're new, subscribe. Turn on your post notifications anytime I upload to get a notification. This is Motivation for Young Christians. I'm out.